Hey, I want to welcome everybody in Claremont. What's up, Claremont? I'm with White River Junction in the house, and listen, yeah, yeah. But, but I want to give a really special shout out to our online folks. We love you so much. And I know there are lots and lots of people all over the globe hanging out with us. And we're really grateful for you and our YouTube crowd, our church online and Facebook. We love you guys. And uh, this is a special weekend. It's Easter Sunday, Easter weekend. And uh, we make a big deal about Easter here at Riverbank Church. It's kind of, we always say this amongst our staff, it's like Super Bowl weekend for Christians, right? This is it, man. No resurrection. And we just sang those songs like, without Jesus resurrecting from the dead, we are hopeless, right? But this weekend, we, re we are reminded of the hope we have in Jesus. And so for those of you who are first-time guests, thanks for hanging out with us. If you're online or you're one, of our, you're, you're one of our locations, let me ask you to do me a favor. If you're online, let our hosts know that you're a first-time guest. We wanna help you take a next step. We wanna get a gift in your hand. If you're in person at one of our locations, same thing, go to the new here, start, start here at your location. And we have friends that wanna help you uh, get connected and even give you a gift. Like who doesn't like free stuff. Come on now, right? We all love free stuff. Now, today is interesting. Um, as I was preparing for the message, I was thinking about uh, a story I had heard. Um, any, any discovery in History Channel people? Anybody like that? I love those. And uh, anytime they have a story like mysterious and fabulous and almost supernatural, I'm in, you know? And, and I remember hearing this story many years ago, and it led me to do a little investigating for today's message. And it was about this submarine, okay, in 1939. Now I have a picture here. For those of you online, we got a little a kind of a close-up here. You can see it. This is an actual, this is the real picture. Now, I, not the real one. I didn't like steal it from the museum or anything. You know what I'm saying? But this is like a real fake picture of the real picture, okay? And you can see, you can see the submarine from 1939. And guess what? This is taken in Portsmouth, New Hampshire at the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard. I had family who worked there. I'm sure many have. And, and so this is a well-known uh, submarine. As a matter of fact, this picture was taken right after it was finished being built and they're getting ready to send it out to be, uh, you know, in, in the deep seas, right? And what's interesting about it, it's called the Squalus. And the Squalus has an interesting story that I want to share with you today. It was on the morning of May 23rd, 1939. I, I know that's a long time ago, over 80 years ago. But what's interesting is the technology of the time. This was a very technologically advanced submarine. And uh, the, it was kind of right before the United States got into World War II, and we were kind of building up uh, some of our military structure in this Squalus submarine was going out on May 23rd, 1939, off the coast of New Hampshire, right out of Portsmouth Harbor. And uh, it was taking one of its uh, pre-commission uh, runs, testing some of the systems. Uh, and on the submarine that day, at 8.40 in the morning with, well, there were 58 crew members on board. Uh, at 8.40 in the morning, they took a dive off the, uh, about nine miles off of the coast. You, if you've heard of the Isle of Shoals, if you've ever been out of Portsmouth for any of our New England people, you've been on a whale watch, you've been by there. You know what I'm saying? And so this uh, submarine, the Squalus, went out off the coast of Portsmouth at uh, 8.40 in the morning, nine miles off the coast as a test run. And as they were going down, to the depths of the water, uh, they ran into some problems, started taking on water. Uh, and so it became an issue. The crew was a little bit freaked out, as you could imagine, as they were taking a dive. And so they were making some adjustments, hoping to get it to uh, rise back up and surface, but they couldn't. And the submarine actually uh, sunk to the bottom of the ocean at 240 feet. Everybody say, oh, snap. Not good, right? 58 crew members trapped at the bottom of the ocean floor in the Squalus submarine. And for them, it was very 
very difficult. There was 25 men on board who were trapped in water-filled compartments who lost their lives that day, but 33 living men were trapped in an airtight area, hoping and striving and praying for rescue. It's a story of rescue. See, communication is made, and ultimately, a rescue mission begins for the squalus that day in May of 1939. Interesting enough, within 39 hours, now again, this is, this is when there was, there was not the technology we have now. They had to work hard for this, but within 39 hours of the ship sinking, all 33 survivors were rescued from the bottom of the ocean floor. It's a remarkable story. As a matter of fact, there was hope for all 33 of those men. They were able to be rescued, go back to their families. But here's the thing. This story is so fabulous because it still stands to this day as the largest underwater rescue in the history of the world. A crazy story. 33 men were able to go back to their families that next day, 39 hours after they sunk to the bottom of the ocean, I'm sure many of the families, and I read the story, were uh, scared to death, and they just had already decided that their, their loved one was lost at sea, yet they were able to go home. They were rescued, and this rescue mission stands to this day as a powerful story for you and me as we hear it. There's nothing more moving to me, and I'm sure for you as well, than hearing the story of rescue. We're all captivated by it. We're all stirred by it. We're moved by it. And it makes you appreciate life. But I want to share with you um, that rescue missions require uh, three essentials. A rescue mission like this one and, and a rescue mission like you and me will need, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. There's three essentials. Number one, in order to engage in a rescue mission, there's problem awareness. You need to be aware that there's actually a problem. You must be informed. And let's listen, this is important. It's not just the, the rescuer that needs to be informed of the problem, but the rescued needs to know there pro there's a problem too, right? I mean, if the guys at the bottom of the ocean floor in the Squalus in 1939, if they were sitting there thinking, hey, look, We've got an oceanfront view now down here, 250 feet at the bottom of the ocean. We'll just, we'll figure it out. You know what? Everybody get a cup. Let's just start bailing water out. We'll be okay. That, that would be absurd. They actually had to be aware themselves that they were at the bottom of the ocean and that there was an urgency for them to get rescued. They needed to be aware of their need for rescue as much as the rescuer who they needed to come and get them from the depths of the sea. You see, rescue is, an import, is important that both parties know this. And, and the Squalus uh, crew members were well aware of their need for rescue, so much so that they reached out. They, they used various means of getting the word out. They were, they were at the bottom of the ocean, nine miles off the coast. Nobody really knew they were there. The radio situation was very different than it is now. They didn't have sonar like we do now. It was very different. And they had to be really crafty with how they got the word out. They needed rescue. And those who were rescuing need to be attentive to that. You know, rescue needs urgency. And both parties had it. Now, for you and me, this is how it relates. Did you know that you, me, we have a problem as humans. Just like the, the, the crew members of the Squalus, they had a problem. They were stuck at the bottom of the ocean floor and they needed rescue. Human beings, we too have a serious rescue issue. It, it's this, it says in Romans chapter three, it's twofold. Romans chapter three says, for everyone has sinned and we all fall short of God's glorious standard. So the problem that we have as human beings is quite different than the squalus survivor, uh, the squalus, squalus people who needed rescue. You and me, we need rescue from our sin. The sin is this whole idea that we do wrong things. We miss the mark. We tell lies. We steal things. We, we think about things we shouldn't think about. 
And the, 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 the reality is this is every one of us, you, me, it doesn't matter where you are watching this. You could be on the other side of the world. And I know we have friends who watch in Africa and who, who watch in Asia. And we have friends all over North America. Listen, none of us is exempt from this. We all have this, this need for rescuing from sin. And sin is, is this, this idea that we've fallen short of God and his glorious standard. God is holy and you and me are not. I don't have to convince you of that because you know, you're like, yeah, Chris, you're reading my mail. I'm a hot mess. But here's the second part of this idea that you and me need rescue. It's not just that we're sinners, but it says in Romans 6, 23, at the beginning, it says, for the wages of sin is what? Death. Here, here's what it is. The consequence of our sin is death. Ultimately, you will die one day. And nobody ever argues with me that. Like, you're going to die. And I know it's kind of cryptic to say and think, but it's true. 10 out of 10 people die. But here's the dynamic that is interesting. You and me are created with eternity written on our hearts. By the way, we're going to talk more about this next week in depth as we start this series called Heaven. You do not want to miss it. But did you know that you have eternity written on your heart? God made you and me with eternity in mind. And so this idea of sin also has a consequence that is eternal, that one day without our sin removed, without our sin taken away, we face eternity separated from God in a literal place called hell. My friends, that's a problem. It's a problem. And in order for us to be rescued, we have to be aware of our problem. Let me ask you, are you aware of your problem? I, I promise you, our friends on the Squalus were well aware of their problem. They were trapped at the bottom of the ocean floor, 240 feet underneath the sea, limited with communication. They knew they had a rescuer above the surface, but they had to find a way to reach them. Can I just tell you that we have a similar problem? Our problem, though, is eternal. Our problem is tied to our sin and our wrongdoing and our standing with God. You see, this life is absolutely temporary, and that should drive the sense of urgency for you and me to say, I need rescuing from God. We've got to be aware that there's a problem, that you and me, we are trapped we are separated from God and we face separation from him eternally in a literal place called hell. The people on the Squalus, well, they were separated by the ocean, at the depths of the ocean, and they needed rescuing. You and me, it's far worse and more intense that we have a serious sin problem. But here's the thing, rescue requires that we're aware of the problem. But secondly, rescue requires that there's a solution to the problem. There needs to be a solution. Now, I want you to write that down, that there needs to be a solution provision. There needs to be a solution provision. A, a problem is made aware and creates an opportunity for solution identity. Again, our friends on the Squalus at the bottom of the ocean floor, well, it need, they needed to be in a position where they could get the word out that they needed rescuing. Well, interestingly enough for the Squalus, the Navy uh, dropped everything they were doing. When they found out what was going on at the bottom of the ocean, when they realized that they have a crew trapped, cannot get out, stuck, and it's inevitable that they will die if there's not rescue, the Navy stopped everything. The whole uh, east coast of the U.S. military, uh, part of the Navy of the U.S. part uh, of the military, they literally jumped on it. There were boats going up the coast. They, had, they actually got stuck. The, one of the boats that was supposed to come up from Connecticut to go to the, uh, to off the coast of Portsmouth, they couldn't get there fast enough, so they drove a, a vehicle up uh, as fast as they could. They had the police uh, setting off all the road. They had roadblocks. They had all the, uh, the red lights. They had everything blocked off up the coast of, of New England so that they could get the rescuers to those who need rescuing. It was that urgent. And the truth was, is they had recognized 
that there's a, a serious problem. And so they provided a solution. They put together an intentional and an urgent response. And the squalus was in serious trouble. So they did something about it. The Navy had a solution to the squalus problem. So for you and me, it's like this. We have a problem too. We just talked about it. And the, and the truth is, is sin and consequences, it, the problem, there's got to be a solution to it. And God, can I tell you, has a very urgent, intentional solution for our sin problem. Let me, let me share this. It continues on in Romans chapter 6. We just read it. For the wages of sin is death. But watch what it says, continuing, but the free gift of God like God has a solution to our sin problem. The, the free gift of God is eternal life through who? Christ Jesus, our Lord. Jesus Christ is the solution to our problem. The Navy, they had a solution to the squalus problem. Well, God has a solution to our sin problem. And that is his son, Jesus. It says in, uh, in John chapter three, verse 16 and verse 17, for this is how God loved the world. You see, God's solution is this. He gave his one and only son a free gift. The solution to our sin problem is God's love for us through his son, Jesus, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but will have what? Eternal life. It goes on and it says in verse 17, God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to what? Save the world. The word save could be rescue. You see, we have a serious sin problem, but God has a solution, and the solution is his son, Jesus. Jesus died on a Roman cross, paid the price for your sins and my sins, and three days later, after he was buried, he erupted from the grave, and he, he did what we could never do for ourselves, is he paid the price for our sin, and he has given us hope for everlasting life in heaven. That's why we celebrate Resurrection Sunday, Easter, because of God's gift, his son Jesus, the solution to our sin problem. It's hope for all people. Hope for you and hope for me. You see, rescue requires that there's a provided solution, and we just see it, that God has a solution for you and me. The Navy provided a solution for the squalus, and our God provides a solution for you and me, and that is the son, Jesus. Now, here's the third part of a rescue. It, it actually requires a response. It requires a response. When you are aware of the problem, okay, and everybody watching right now, you are absolutely aware that there's a sin problem. You can either say, okay, yeah, I'm jacked up and I have a problem. And then I share with you, you're aware also now that there's a, there's a solution to the problem and that's Jesus Christ. But you and me, we have to respond no different than the squalus. Here, here's the thing. It takes both parties though to respond. The squalus was an interesting story in that those who are trapped at the bottom of the sea, they had to do something too. They actually had to recognize the urgency of the problem. You have to recognize the urgency of your sin problem. But did you know that for you and me, this response is also something that God has responded to you and me? Again, it's a son, Jesus. And for you and me, it requires the rescued, those of us who have the problem, we have to respond to the rescuer. Uh, I have a picture here of the Navy ship that arrived on scene. This is actually on scene at the rescue mission. And if you look up close, you'll see right here that this is a unique device that, that was actually in development upon this rescue. And they sent this to the bottom of the ocean. It's, it's, a, it's a sea bell and it traps air so that you can go to the bottom. And, and they were able to, watch this, recover all 33 survivors through this device right here. It was a plan. It was intentional. It was a rescue. They had to respond. The Navy responded, but the people at the bottom of the ocean, when the, when the bell came to, the dive bell came down to the squalus, the people in the squalus had to decide, do I get into the, to the dive bell or do I not get in? I mean, am I gonna trust this or am I just gonna say, you know what, I'm good down here. I got oceanfront property, I'm good. All 33 said, no, 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 this is the solution. 
And guess what? I'm responding. I'm getting in. They were all able to go home to their families. Interestingly enough, all 33 survivors within weeks were back on another submarine. For you and me, we've got to respond. Can I just tell you, God's already responded to your sin, my sin. He's, res- he's responded to our problem. But how are you going to respond to him? That's what matters. He sent his son to die for you, to give you hope, to provide for you the solution to your sin problem. He's given a promise of everlasting life to all who believe in him. Jesus is the solution to our sin problem. How are you gonna respond to him? Are you just gonna sit in your proverbial submarine at the bottom of the sea and say, you know what, I'm good. I'm gonna stay here. I'll figure it out on my own. Thanks for sending the sea bell down. That's my best solution, but I think I can figure it out on my own. Or are you gonna say, you know what? Thank you for responding. I'm stepping in to your solution. I believe there are people right now watching. Maybe you're in Claremont. You're, you're watching somewhere across the globe. You're in your living room and you're hearing this and you're like, oh my goodness. I'm just like those who are trapped at the bottom of the sea in the squalus. And it's like right now, God has sent this, this device, be his son, Jesus, to come and rescue me. And I can either believe in him and I can respond to him, or I can say, you know, I'm gonna figure it out on my own. The Bible says this in Romans chapter 10. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord, the rescuer, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be what? Rescued, saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are what? Saved, rescued, So if you're watching right now and this story has hit home for you, you're watching, you're like, you know, Chris, I feel like this story of the Squalus, this this submarine that's stuck and trapped at the bottom of the sea. I'm one of those, I'm one of those crewmen at the bottom of the sea. I'm stuck, I'm trapped. I don't know what to do. And today you've clarified that Jesus Christ is the solution. He's the rescuer who's come down to to release me from the depths. What do I do? How do I respond to this? Well, I just wanna give you a real easy way to respond. It's simple. If you're watching online, you can simply text these two words, respond now to 94,000. Do that. If you're like, I need rescuing, I'm trapped, I need Jesus, I wanna believe upon Jesus and be rescued, will you just simply text those two words, respond now to 94,000? Here's what will happen. When you text that, there's gonna be a, a, a text that comes back to you and there's gonna be a link. And one of my, one of my awesome friends is gonna get back to you and they're just gonna follow up with you and help you better understand what it is to be rescued. Now, If you are in the house or you're in Claremont and you're like, Chris, what do I do to be rescued? Well, I wanna give you the opportunity to say yes to Jesus. I wanna give you the opportunity to be rescued. I wanna give you the opportunity to respond. With every head bowed, with every eye closed, and if you're watching online, you can join us as well. Wherever you are, if you're, You're like, Chris, I want to respond to the rescuer. I want to respond to Jesus. I no longer want to be trapped. I no longer want to be in this place where I I just am helpless. I recognize I have a problem and I need to be rescued. I want to give you the opportunity right now Here's what I'm gonna do. Again, every head bowed and every eye closed. If you wanna say yes to Jesus, you wanna be rescued by the rescuer. I'm gonna count to three. And when I get to three, I'm gonna invite you 
wherever you are, Claremont, White River, wherever you are, when I get to three, I'm gonna invite you to quietly raise your hand. One, again, the Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be rescued. He's crying out to you, he's calling out to you. He has sent his son to be the rescuer. You have to believe, two. Today is the day that you can believe and there's no better time than Easter. You can believe right now. And if that's you, three, I want you to just quietly raise your hand right where you are. Just raise your hand right where you are. Claremont, White River, raise your hand and keep it up. And if you have your hand raised, here's what I want you to do. I have a friend right at the end of your aisle. I just want you to look up and I have a friend I wanna connect you with. They're gonna help you take this step of rescue and it's gonna transform your life. They're gonna get something in your hands to help you better understand what it is to follow Jesus. Will you pray with me? Jesus, thank you so much for this beautiful story. It just blows my mind how it connects to your story for us. And I pray, Lord, that we would be a people. Many of us are fo- your followers. We're, we're your, we believe in you already. Lord, help us to never forget the price that was paid to rescue us. So much greater than 33 men trapped at the bottom of the ocean that you sent your son to give us hope and life. I pray in Jesus' name, amen.